It's a chilly Friday morning, the day after Thanksgiving. 37 degrees, as you can see. Uh, and I decided to film this short little impromptu video because um, I've kind of been keeping you guys in the dark for a while in terms of what my car plans are. Um, yes, I do have more car plans. I know it's only been about a year since I got the Cayman, um, but as it turns out, I'm actually selling the Cayman um, in about two hours. So I wanted to give you guys an update on why I'm selling the Cayman, um, what the experience has been so far, and what car I'm actually replacing the Cayman with, and I'll actually do a reveal of that car uh, a little later in the video because I already have it. So right now, yes, I do have three cars, the NSX, the Cayman, and the Cayman replacement. So the reason I'm selling the Cayman is actually not because I dislike the Cayman at all. If you guys have been following some of my ownership videos on the Cayman, you might remember that I, I have had some complaints with the car that I've been pretty vocal about. Um, for example, the tire noise um, at high speed, even with just some all-season tires, is pretty bad to the point that you can't really hear the stereo. It handles great on track. Uh, it felt great the day I, I brought it to Laguna Seca, but the, the air oil separator failed, and that's such a common failure point on these cars when tracked hard. And uh, I really didn't want to spend the $1,800 to buy the motorsport part, which would presumably fix that problem that's like close to 10% of the value of the car. Just to make it not suck quarts of oil into the intake just seemed a little bit ridiculous to me. Um, but overall, I've been really happy with the car. It's been fairly reliable. Um, I have spent a bit on maintenance, not not too bad. I've spent about four grand, I think, in, um, including all parts and upgrades and everything. So yeah, overall, I've been happy with the car and I was actually excited to um, eventually put some mods on it and take it out on, on the racetrack again. But it turns out that one of my friends actually moved out of country somewhat unexpectedly and it was supposed to be a short-term thing and he would come back, but it turns out that um, he kind of started his own little business over there and, and he decided to stay there. And so he needed to get rid of his car that he had just bought a few months prior to moving. And he just didn't want to deal with the hassle of um, trying to find a random buyer, which he did try that for a bit, but it just wasn't working out. So one day he just hit me up and asked me, hey, do you want to buy my car um, for a huge discount? I mean, the, the homie discount was real on this thing. And I thought about it. I had just turned down, you know, in the, in the past couple weeks prior to that, um, like two different S2000s that I was also interested in buying, both from friends. Um, it turns out that both of those S2000s within 24 hours and in one case it was like within like three hours of me turning down um the offer to buy the car um they actually sold for more than than my offer so just goes to show uh, uh i guess my my video on 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 you know whether the s2000 is still a good buy in in 2020 um was was pretty accurate like these those cars have just skyrocketed in value and in there's no end in sight as of right now, as far as I can see. So that kind of left me with a bitter taste in, in my mouth because I just missed out on, on two, you know, obviously very good deals. Um, and I, did, I didn't really want to miss out on another one. I kind of had FOMO. And so when my friend offered me um, his car, I, I thought about it for, for about a week. And then I was like, you know what? I'm just going to buy it. Um, it seems like a good deal. And as you'll see, as you'll see in a moment, it's it's a logical upgrade from a 987.1 Cayman S. That may give you some hints as to as to what it is. And so, yeah, I'm sitting in my car right now, just getting it warmed up. Um, the the buyer of the car will be here in a couple hours. He reached out to me on Craigslist. Craigslist was was actually the only place I posted it, and he drove down all the way from Sacramento um, yesterday morning, Thanksgiving morning, just to check out the car and and test drive it. Um, we took it around the block, and he was a really cool dude. Um, it turns out that he actually has been scouring the, the internet for Cayman videos, or specifically 9871 Cayman S videos for a while, and he came across some of my videos a while back. Before he came to see the car, I had emailed him all the documentation. He actually looked up my name and, and realized that he's actually like watched all of my videos. So yeah, this car is going to a subscriber, which is pretty cool. Um, Hopefully, you know, he'll he'll keep me posted on what he does with the car. I'm really excited to see that. The car itself is super solid now. I've put, um, so 73,800, yeah, that's, that's exactly 10,000 miles. So I've put exactly 10,000 miles on the car in 15 months of ownership. You know, I've just barely scratched the surface with Porsche ownership. And, and truth be told, um, there's still a lot more I can do with this car. 
Um, I, I really did want to experience it on track, um, you know, without <laughs> having a uh, massive AOS failure. But it looks like I'm not gonna get a chance to do that. But I will have the chance to do that to my new car. So without further ado, here is the new car. You might be thinking, is that a GT3? Um, and unfortunately, no, it is just a GT3 bumper. Um, so this is a 2005 997.1 Carrera. Um, the base model, 3.6 liter, two wheel drive. It does have stock wheels currently, as you can see the 19s. And um, it has the 997.2 GT3 rear bumper, which I really, really like. Um, the point two added these, this sort of like angle here in the, in the tail lights, which I think looks a lot better than the point one, which kind of just goes all the way across like that. And it has the 997.1 GT3 front bumper, which I actually also prefer over the 997.2. So it's kind of a mishmash of, um, exterior parts to make it look like its own sort of unique GT3 <laughs> replica, if you will. As you can see, the front lip is pretty scraped up, but that's fine. It's an easy to replace item. The color of the car is seal gray, which I actually think looks pretty darn good. So if you guys are familiar with these earlier water-cooled um, Porsche engines, you'll know that this one still has an IMS bearing that is prone to failure and um, an air oil separator that is prone to failure. So it's got all the same potential issues as the Cayman. One of the previous owners actually has done the LN engineering IMS bearing upgrade. So that should no longer be a problem in this car. Um, as you can see, it's got an aftermarket steering wheel. It's got this insane CAE shifter. Um, it, it feels absolutely amazing to shift. Although it is a little bit phallic in nature. Uh, the cool thing is though, um, in all seriousness, that uh, when I shift gears, I barely have to move my hand to this, uh, from the steering wheel to the shifter and back, which is really nice. It's got navigation, which is absolutely hilarious. Actually, let me, let me show you guys this 2005 navigation technology courtesy of Porsche. All right, check this out. Oh yeah, super pixelated, can barely see the street names, but hey, kind of cool, right? Maybe. It's got the typical paint faded climate control buttons, just like my 987. Um, as you can see, 65,000 miles. What I do like about it over the Cayman in terms of the gauge cluster is it has uh, oil temp and wa uh, oil temp, water temp, and oil pressure. The Cayman only has this, these middle three pods. It does not have the, um, the oil temp and the oil pressure, which I mean, yeah, they're dummy gauges and not that accurate, but still kind of nice to have. It does have Sport Chrono, just like the Cayman, so you get this useless, but really cool looking stopwatch, glorified stopwatch, um, and you get the Sport button, which basically makes the throttle response way too touchy. I'm never, I've never been a fan of this button in any Porsche, um, at least not the, the early 987, 997 generations. The shifter, like I said, feels amazing, although the, I need to loosen this reverse, um, the tension on the reverse, because basically you have to do that. As you can see, I've got <laughs> my Durametric hooked up uh, with the OBD2 cable and my old like 2011 Windows laptop. I've been doing a ton of diagnostic on this car because I've, I've been trying to figure out why it has this misfire issue at uh, low RPMs only happens at low RPMs. Um, I logged it in at high RPMs. The engine actually runs very smooth. It, it feels very fast, um, significantly faster than the Cayman actually, even though it's only a 30 horsepower jump. But at low RPMs, especially when it's cold, the thing just does not want to run properly and it hesitates. So if any of you guys are, are like 996 or you know 
um, owners. Uh, please let me know if you've experienced this issue before. So everything I've done so far to, to try and fix it, I cleaned the math, cleaned the throttle body, um, replaced the, the rubber couplers on the intake plenum. I had the spark plugs replaced, all six. Um, ignition coils were replaced by a previous owner like a couple years ago, so I, I don't think those would have failed because the misfire is happen happening mostly on cylinders one, three, and five. And I think one and three are both on the same bank and then five's on the other bank. So it's kind of unlikely that um, three of the ignition coils would all fail around the same time, but maybe that's what it comes down to. I just haven't gotten to that yet. Then I actually bought a new MAF sensor, so I replaced that even though I cleaned the old one. That didn't help at all. Um, I measured the crankcase volume from the oil filler cap. It was only at five inches of water, which I'm told four to six is considered normal. So if it's t nine or 10 inches or more, supposedly that that's a pretty good indication that the air oil separator has failed. So I'm pretty sure the AOS is fine. One other thing I'm trying just cause it's a cheap, easy fix is I ordered a brake light switch and uh, a clutch cruise control cancel switch, which um, we'll basically just install, uh, they go behind the pedals here, somewhere, somewhere in there. I gotta figure it out. That's gonna be a uh, back-breaking uh, job to do, but uh, if that doesn't help the hesitation problem, then I might just have the ignition coils done again, or maybe just swap some of the, the cylinders around, um, like maybe swap coil three and six, and, and see if six starts misfiring. Oh, another thing. I found out very um, unexpectedly is that it has these Nitto NTO1 tires, 305s in the back, um, 235s in the front. And I thought they were fine. I mean, yeah, there's a little bit of rubbing because the car had an extra spacer on it that was causing the rear to rub on compression. But if you look from here, the tread looks fine. Like, yeah, it's maybe down to a couple millimeters, but that's enough to daily drive for a bit or maybe get one track day out of. But then the other day, I actually took the wheels off to take off that extra spacer, and this is what I found. Yeah, these tires, the inside is completely uh, worn down to the, the bare cords. So um, I just ordered a new set of tires last night. Um, Goodyear Eagle F1 Supercar 3s. Um, there's not a whole lot of like good tire options in this size and it was between that and the Michelin Pilot Sport 4S But I, I went with the supercar threes because they're like a hundred bucks cheaper and should be better on track So here's the motor uh, 3.6 liter naturally aspirated makes 325 horsepower um, It's all stock with the exception of this uh, What is this top speed whatever just intake hose the car used to have a bigger throttle body and uh, intake plenum. The stock parts got put back on um, by the pre one of the previous owners, so I figured maybe the hesitation was just due to a vacuum leak from that install. So I, I replaced those hoses, as you can see there, with the clamps, um, one on each side. That didn't seem to do it. I replaced the, the MAF sensor here with a new part that was like almost 300 bucks. Did absolutely nothing. Um, I checked the oil filler cap, so if you remove the cap and you put your hand on it and there's uh, a reasonable amount of vacuum, then that generally means the AOS is working fine. But if it's really hard to remove the cap while the engine's running, that means there's excessive vacuum and the AOS may have failed. Um, so I did that basic test and it seemed okay, but then I actually hooked up this uh, modified um, oil filler cap with a, with a hose. Um, that someone on on Renlist, which is the port, one of the Porsche forums, uh, very, very graciously offered to let me borrow. Um, it turns out he only lives like 20 minutes from me. And uh, yeah, that test showed that the AOS is fine. So go figure. So yeah, that's uh, that's my update on the new car. Um, I'll keep you guys posted as I learn more about it. Um, like I said, I have the new tires coming in soon. I'm replacing those those pedal switches soon. Hopefully that fixes it. If it doesn't, then um, ignition coil swap, which is gonna be a pain because you have to actually like remove the exhaust. But once I get everything figured out and I'm fairly confident, knock on wood, that, um, that I will. Um, yeah, this is gonna be my new daily driver. 
um, and a part-time track car. I haven't tracked since March, um, so I'm really itching to get back out there, but it, at this rate, it doesn't look like I'll be tracking until 2021. But I'm really excited to see what this thing can do. This is my first car that um, actually has over 300 horsepower, believe it or not. And of course, I still have the NSX, still kind of just a uh, garage queen. Drive it <laughs> once a week, don't track it at all because just no. So yeah, let me know what you guys think of the new daily in track car. Am I out of my mind for buying another <laughs> uh, Porsche that has potential engine issues? Or does it make logical sense as an upgrade over a car that I actually really, really admire, the 987.1 Cayman S?